What happens if you want your audience to believe that the Founding Fathers did not want separation of church and state when they obviously clearly and repeatedly did? Well, you make up quotes defending your position and dishonestly attribute them to the likes of James Madison and Thomas Jefferson. Glenn Beck, who sees President Obama as a socialist, Marxist, communist, somethingist, is himself about to unveil his 100-year plan, saying, quote, we need to start thinking like the Chinese. Mr. Beck is about to launch something he calls American Revival. The announcement for the first event in Orlando next month, breathlessly touting, quote, the eight-hour event, you and I are on stage with three different experts. David Barton is going to be the first one. We're going to talk about the meaning of faith in America. You'll be stunned when you learn and see the real history that is no longer taught. More on Mr. Barton and those quotes in a moment. But this series of meetings, as noted by Will Bunch, the Philadelphia Daily News, will lead to a rally at the Lincoln Memorial on August 28th, which is the 47th anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. Uh, but what Beck has is a plan, possibly in conjunction with his next book, as he noted last year, quoting, we need to start thinking like the Chinese. I'm developing a 100-year plan for America, a 100-year plan. We will plant this idea, and it will sprout roots. Now back to the kickoff speaker, Mr. Barton. He is the founder of the group called Wall Builders, and he published a book called The Myth of Separation, a book so full of phony information about our founding fathers, including fake quotes, that it was rewritten and reissued under a new name, according to Will Bunch. But the basic premise is that we have misinterpreted the founding fathers. For example, Thomas Jefferson viewed the separation of church and state as one directional, meaning to protect religion from government, but not to protect government from being commingled with religion. That is, of course, completely untrue. Let's turn to the senior policy analyst at Americans United for Separation of Church and State, Rob Boston. Thanks for your time tonight, sir. Thanks for having me on. We sort of glanced over this person that Beck will be featuring, David Barton. Can you tell us more about him and this, this group of his, the uh, wall builders? The best way to describe David Barton is to say that he is to history what the creationists are to science. Uh -huh. uh, against all available evidence, Barton uh, argues that the United States was founded by the framers to be a Christian nation. Now, of course, I forgot to mention that in the Constitution, but that's just an inconvenient detail. And he's made quite a handy living with his group wall builders promoting this idea of his through books, DVDs, videos, speaking presentations, this sort of thing. There is this quote that he's supposedly responsible for promulgating from Madison that supports his argument. And it turns out this is where from some sort of insurance company uh, 1950s handout calendar? Is that, is that the supposed source <laughs> Nobody, of the quote? Nobody's really certain what the origin of this mysterious quote is, but it's a quote of, of James Madison lauding the Christian principles of the American government. And anybody who has read even a little bit of James Madison would know that that just does not reflect his point of view. Uh, a number of us spend a lot of time trying to track down the quote and, mm -hmm. and figure out where it actually came from, but it's completely fabricated. Uh, Madison never said anything like that. And uh, speaking of, uh, of beliefs, Mr. Barton has previously in his career addressed gatherings of uh, so-called Christian groups that have this unfortunate racist bent to them? Yes, back in the early 90s, he did give two speeches to organizations that are so out there that they make Pat Robertson look sane. And uh, this, of course, was in the pre-internet days, but you think even back then you could look at the flyers and literature that these groups were producing and realize that they were both anti-Semitic and racist, which they were. Mr. Beck claims that about 100 years ago, the progressive movement designed a plan to create a socialist utopia. This is uh, according to uh, the, his view of the world as the Antichrist was Woodrow Wilson. Uh, th thus, he has to have a 100-year corrective, a plan, which he cleverly has called the plan. On his website, his efforts, let me quote this, culminate in The Plan, a book that will provide specific policies, principles, and most importantly, action steps that each of us can take to play a role in this refounding. So it, what, it, do we have a sense from this what he thinks he's doing, but what the, what the people who are drawn to this idea, what they may think he's doing? One thing I've noticed from tracking the religious right for 23 years is that w when they don't like the facts, they just invent new facts. And kind of like fake butter, you know, sometimes they can be just as good as the actual facts to a lot of people. So they promote these crazy facts and they, they promote this, this perspective. And this is exactly what's going on. This idea that somehow this grand and glorious Christian legacy of this nation was stolen away from us and now it's being suppressed by those evil li liberals. And of course, the universities are in on this, the colleges, the media, everybody's in on this conspiracy. And people like Beck and people like Barton and people like all these TV preachers and so on, 
they're going to get the real truth and the real facts out to the American people. And of course, since the actual history doesn't support their, uh, support their point of view, they just invented a new history, just like the creationists invented a new science. Obviously, from the far right, and particularly in the last couple of years, we've seen these extraordinary uh, whoppers, to call them kindly, uh, the, the birther movement and the distortion of what the Tenth Amendment meant. Uh, but why, do you find this particular thing, this idea of let's flip this on its head, it's not separation of church and state, but the state necessarily building a wall to protect the church particularly troubling? I do find it that way. And, and one of the reasons is that right now, as we're speaking, there are people all over the world just being oppressed because of what they believe or don't believe about God, who would love to have an official separation of church and state. I mean, to me, separation of church and state is one of the great success stories of this nation. It's given us more religious freedom than, than probably any people in history, incredible religious diversity, a, a pretty good degree of interfaith peace, if you think about it. Mm -hmm. and, and there are people out there saying that that's a bad idea, that we should do away with that, that it's, it's ahistorical. Uh, it, it boggles the mind. How do you feel about this Virginia legislature move? It's off point a little bit about the microchips today, that uh, they're keeping the microchips from being implanted in people because it could be the mark of the Antichrist. Well, you know, when I, when I was a kid, I remember reading uh, about that, and there were claims made that actually it was going to be a barcode. They were going to put the barcode mm -hmm. on your hand or on your forehead, and you would just, you know, go to the supermarket and get scanned. And, and then naturally, any time the government wanted to monitor you, they would just use the barcode. Now, that was before we had chips. So you see the sort of paranoid right. strain of thinking among these folks. Just uh, it, it advances to meet the new technology that we have. Besides which, that's called the iPhone, and they figured out how to charge us for it. Rob Boston, <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> Americans United for Separation of Church and State. Thank you, sir. Thank you. That's Countdown for this, the 2,477th day since the previous president declared mission accomplished in Iraq. I'm Keith Olbermann. Yeah. Good night and good luck.